why he no work? I don't know. It's brought to me. So let me give you guys the backstory. This housed an i7 2600K, an HD7950, 8 gigs of RAM, uh, 128 gig SSD that probably cost over $100 at the time, a 750 gig re refurbished hard drive or something like that, the first refurbished and new, uh, Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo. This is sold in 2014. It wasn't my original system, like different case, different graphics card, but otherwise it was kind of like what I was working with to a degree before I went with my uh, um, fourth jet build with the um, 97, well, and that had all sorts of graphics cards. Now, you guys are going to come along for that journey on what I went through trying to figure out why it doesn't work. And this is going to be a testament to, while I do recommend people to build your computers, that the time and money this gentleman spent on trying to track down why his first parts didn't work, his second parts didn't work, taking it to uh, PC shops, taking it to Best Buy, spending a lot of his time and money, it still doesn't work. He had lost my number, that's why he didn't contact me. Um, <clears throat> but this is kind of why building your own PC is a good idea, but you it's not always perfect. And if you don't have the tools like a lot of PC builders have, like myself and my colleagues, then you end up getting a lot more headache than the satisfaction you get. So take the journey with me about everything I did trying to figure out what's wrong with this computer. Welcome to episode three, four, I don't know. Another episode of fixing a customer's computer. So to kind of just show you right now, kind of some of the issues we're working with, this was originally my first system I built. Now, let's back this up. None of anything in here is actually original. Um, the case is different. The guy took it apart, put it together. So my cable management, even at its worst, wasn't this bad. Um, so he replaced the board and the CPU. Um, and then vent some pins, didn't work. And he replaced it again. And now we get power, no video. We tried on board back here. We tried the video card here. Uh, could be a couple different things. So it's very important now to pull everything out. Um, we're going to pull everything out, put everything on a motherboard box, and we're going to go ahead and test it. And we're going to see, you know, we're probably not getting anything different. Um, but I've already tried moving the memory around. It definitely could be a bad stick. Uh, I did move this over. So this was pushing up against that because I was just testing some things. But um, it could be a couple things. Uh, I hope he didn't bend another pin on the motherboard. Um, and I really feel bad because he, uh, I guess he lost my contact info. So I built this back in like 2013, uh, or I sold it back then rather. It was built originally. It was a 2600K system, HD7950. So back in that era, that was actually a pretty good system uh, because Sandy Bridge was only a few years old. Uh, it still held up well. Intel was basically doing <laughs> Nothing but sitting on their asses, so or excuse me, their butts. I gotta keep this PG. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it, basically everything unplugged, uh, and then we'll pull the board out. I'm not interested in pulling out the SSD or anything yet because we can't even get post video, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and test it without any uh, drives in anyhow. Um, that's probably something I should test already, but so now we got that out. We gotta get this power supply out here. So it's a TX750, I believe it's Corsair. Yeah. And uh, man, so I sold this 2013-2014, I believe, and I feel bad because he spent money at Best Buy trying to get it fixed and um, went to a computer shop and he, his dad had lost my contact info and I, I um, really wish it would have contacted me. And this has been dead for about a year. So I definitely want to get this up and running, um, but unfortunately, and this is, I don't want to say any fault of his, but it's really dirty, and it hasn't been cleaned, and that's not necessarily the problem, but it's not, it's not good either. I don't know if he tested the power supply, but we could have some shorts in here. I don't know. This is also the reason why anything more than like 500, 550, I generally use modular power supplies. It's just pretty much a requirement at this point. But uh, let's go ahead and try this first. 
Let's keep the stock configuration the way it was, and then we'll go from there. Okay. Now. Is this on? Yeah. So this monitor doesn't work that well, but it should work if it has video out. Now, one of the things I'm going to show you, I'm actually going to try the other monitor just to be safe, is this. There's a, there's a light right there. So we have to figure out what that light means. Okay, I've swapped out the RAM. I kept it in the same slot for a reason. Um, it should be in the second slot, but I tried in the second slot there and it didn't help. Okay. So we were getting power to here. But we're still not getting any kind of video out. Now we did check the onboard graphics and that was having issues too. So we're going to try the better monitor that we know that works. Switch off. And then we're going to have to mount the CPU. So here we have it. Four LEDs. Top one, which is the one that's up. A CPU is not detected or failed. So there is a problem with the CPU. Oh god, I gotta take the CPU out. This is not gonna be good. The problem is, is just because it says it failed doesn't mean that's actually the issue. We'll definitely want to take this off correctly. He said last time he didn't install the cooler right and it had uneven pressure. And he bent him that way. I have a sneaking suspicion that we're going to find the answer over here. And this is kind of why I'm not a fan of the Hyper 212 Evo. It's just a pain to put on and take off. There we go. Okay, that one. Although, if you just mark the board, it's cheaper. So, we'll find out. Okay. So, thermal paste application is fine. Um, it's not, I'd probably use, personally I'd use a tad less, but it's not really a big deal. We've actually have seen from, I think it was Gamers Nexus did it, where literally more is actually slightly better than less, actually a fair bit better than less. So, let's get her cleaned up here. I won't clean it up 100%. I just want to get most of this off here. In fact, I'm going to have to take this out of the socket here. It is installed correctly. And I. Oh, yeah, we have bend pins. Uh, not much, but we do have at least one. Before we do that, I'm curious about something. I'll show you guys in a minute. So I have no heat sink on there. I get that. What we want to see is if we get any heat. Get rid of that. Nothing yet. Because that can kind of tell us a fair bit. Yeah, it's still cold. So, what's the verdict? I don't know. I really don't know. Like, it should be hot by now. And it's not even lukewarm yet. There's one pin that might be bent. Maybe one. And... Yeah. That should have been heated up by now. So here's the final test, and I'm not expecting to get results, but a brand new power supply and, and a system that with working memory that just came out of another system I just had on. So I want to see one of two things. I want to feel the CPU heat up, or I want to see post on the second monitor. Honestly, a CPU heating up would be good, but I should already feel it getting warm and it's it's still cold 
So, here's the thing. I'm torn because it's saying there's an issue with the CPU. And LEDs are working. RAM LEDs are working. So I'm not entirely sure what's up. I have to take a guess. I'm leaning towards the CPU. So, unfortunately, the, pro the problem lies, let me take this out here, somewhere in here. Could be the board, could be the processor, I don't know. I did have a third gen system to test as of yesterday, but it was sold. I do have to make my money back on what I do. So, I've given the customer some time to think on some options. Option one would be to take this back to Best Buy, replace, they'd have to ship in the processor, try again. I don't have a problem with that. Charge them an hour, take me, you know, I'll test this components which are running right now on a working system, make sure everything works, and then, you know, I can put it back, cable manage it to a decent degree just because it's not the best case power supply setup. And you know, he already spent $500. Of course, he can get his money back, I believe, and we can go a different route, right? That is definitely an option. Um, the other option is, is I have something that's not as good, unfortunately, as what he was going with, but it is a whole system. It's my 6th-gen uh, i5 overclocked, 16 gigs of RAM. Uh, actually, that's on the way right now. I don't, this is, I don't have a 16 gig kit. RGB fans that are good, the PC cool ones you saw in RX 570. Probably the one piece I wish we could upgrade, but we're kind of towards the tail end of his ideal budget anyhow. Um, but if he was running fine on HD 7950 to a degree, this is a decent step up. Not as high wattage power supply, but a better one. Modular, a better case, my Corsair uh, 275R. Um, you know, just something more modern, looks nicer, works better. You know, that's definitely going to be an option. It's going to have in front of him. So it's going to depend on him. But we did everything we could. Um, it's definitely one of these two. It's probably the processor, if I had to guess. It just happens to be DOA. It happens. Um, but this is part of the reason why of, yes, you can build it yourself. It's not hard to do all this. He did an okay job putting together horrible cable management, but it's fine. Um, but it doesn't work. And he had no way of figuring out. He had to go to computer shops in Best Buy and spend a couple hundred dollars, I think, and still does not have a working system. That's part of building a PC is that if you don't have the parts and the knowledge and the testing. I mean, he did all the great, good testing, took out RAM sticks, checked different RAM sticks, checked onboard video. He did everything he could, but he doesn't have what somebody like me or a lot of my colleagues I work with have, which is a lot of parts to do testing and the knowledge. And in some cases, I don't have everything to verify. So... That's kind of my tip to everybody is just be a little bit cautious when building. When new parts are DOA, it can be difficult to diagnose. It can take time and frustration to try to fix things. So it's not always, it's, it's a good learning experience. I love doing it and I encourage anybody to do it. Just remember there are some caveats with it. And that is when things don't work, you can spend a lot more money trying to chase the problem if you don't already have the investment like I do into doing this already. So hopefully you guys learned something today. If you like this video, hit that, hit this. If you dislike, hit that. But leave a comment. I have one video, a monitor has like seven dislikes, one like. I really would like you guys to comment why you hate it. I suspect I have some reasons, and I'll leave the video up, but I think I know why. Uh, it's not really an overview. It's just, hey, this is what it is and all that stuff. Anyway, uh, subscribe. Um, I'll put some things in the description for you to buy that were featured in this video. But as always, this is Steve from PC Budget Solutions, and I'll see you all later on down the road.